Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on April 12th, 2024. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update as well earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Always starting out here, looking at our sun for the past 48 hours, brought to you by Solar Dynamics Observatory, mixed with Daily Events Worldwide. Thank you all so much for watching. Only one M-class solar flare to report, and that was yesterday. It was not in an earth-facing position. Most of the activity is on the backside still. Multiple sunspot regions will be turning around soon, so watch for solar activity to increase, as it already has, as we've got a couple cresting in here that are pretty big. Having a look at the last 48 hours outgoing, mostly plasma filaments, which are staying to the surface, and not destabilizing right now, but we're going to be keeping an eye on them as they have been pretty active as of late. Closer look here at incoming imagery and as well the last 48 hours. A couple plasma filaments ripping away there. That was yesterday. And then watching the equatorial region there, some flare activity. Multi-spectrum here pointing out coronal hole, which is no longer Earth-facing. We did see a small increase in the solar winds, upwards of 500 kilometers per second. Don't mind that little glitchy framed work there. That is from the calibration of the satellite from Solar Dynamics Observatory. Another light here, 193 angstroms. You can really see the heliosphere and as well the equatorial region there coming in and five sunspot regions. Closer look here at the sunspot regions. Black holes on our sun right now. And some more incoming. Current space weather conditions, there are none to report. Solar winds are coming in at 391 kilometers per second. Solar X-ray flux showing a M-class solar flare yesterday, pretty strong, and as well a strong C-class solar flare today. Not producing any Earth-directed CMEs, but we are detecting a pretty large CME here, showing the Space Weather Prediction Center. Large CME to give us a glancing blow 14th into the 15th of April. That is a pretty big boom. Notice on the right-hand side there, that is the north and south look. So it looks like this space weather will be hitting underneath of our planet. The southern hemisphere mostly being affected, I'm sure. 14th into the 15th. ISPWA Space Prediction Spiral here showing the most recent CME outgoing. This is the most recent CME detected. There's been a few and as well multiple on the backside. Having a look here at SOHO. Showing all the cosmic energy leaving our sun. Big CME taking off from the northern region. And that's the last 48 hours of imagery. And this is the most recent event. As you can see, some of that energy is coming our way. Increased frequency and solar off influx. Now let's get to earthquakes the past 24 hours, starting out here with the largest being a 5.8 Solomon Islands, 41 kilometer depth, deepest the last 24 hours is here, Fiji region, 599 kilometer depth, that was yesterday, deepest today is 148 kilometer depth, still on average, a little bit low, below average right now. Lots of activity through the Philippines and Taiwan aftershocks still. Even southern Japan there and China with the 5.1. 4.6 is there in western Xinjiang. Very quiet across the European and African plate. Just recently here, South America reporting a 4.1 in Coquimbo, Chile. Off the coast. And as well, East Pacific rising activity here up into the Cocos plate. 4.9 there in Nicaragua, 4.6 East Pacific Rise, and as well a 4.2 there Southern Mexico. Across North American Plate, 2.8 there in Missouri, pretty notable. 
and rare earthquake and as well largest across North American soil being a 4.0 magnitude reported Petrolia, California. Other than that, no major swarms to talk about right now. As USGS was reporting, average amount of earthquakes, 198 earthquakes right now in this map area. Average is about 200. But I wanted to give you a look here. Overlooking North America, mostly the United States, of course, here with USGS. But through the California basin, there's been increasing activity all this week. And right on the fault lines, San Andreas and as well the coinciding faults beside it. Having a look here at the last seven days, as you can see, this is only the last seven days for shakers. And they're leading right up into the Bay Area. So just a heads up, San Francisco Bay Area, seeing this increasing seismicity. That's all it's all about, staying aware and prepared. That's the last seven days for earthquakes. Quick look here on our globe, showing the last seven days of shakers around the world. Largest being the 6.2 Indonesia. Sorry, 6.5 that was, magnitude. Heads up, stay aware and prepared. You live in an earthquake prone zone, just have a plan. Especially through Alaska and the Cascades, through California. Okay, much love. Now let's have a look at SO2 forecast. This is all the sulfur dioxide emissions brought to you by mostly our 45 and active volcanoes around the world. SO2 diminishing across North America. We've seen it pretty thick as of late. Eruption at Iceland is closing out. There's only one cone left. Having a look around here, the rest of the world, lots in the Northern Hemisphere, especially over Eastern Russia. Notable here, overlooking the East Atlantic, pretty big dust storm forming here just the last couple days off the coast of Africa. As you can see here, going back to the 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, very large dust storm. So that's helping with the SO2 particulates as well, I guess. And then overlooking Africa and Australia. Tonga region, still lots of SO2 coming from there. And lots of notable SO2 in our southern hemisphere still. After reporting the other day this anomaly, it has continued now for four days just encompassing the planet and not really diminishing. And I do believe that it is the Michael Volcano, Saunders Island in the South Sandwich Islands region. This is a large subduction zone. And this is the only active and erupting volcano throughout this region. So the Michael Volcano most likely is the culprit for all of this SO2. Other than that, it's the mighty Erubus volcano, which is erupting on the coast of Antarctica, but under Australia. Now let's get to weather here, as we do have a very large system affecting eastern Canada and the United States right now, set to bring some pretty cool temperatures. And then the long-range forecast here, Sunday into Monday, big system coming into California, will be mostly windy event, but by the time it gets to central United States, we'll be gaining strength and moisture Big low moving into parts of northern BC and Alaska. And as well, tightly whipped system here for uh, Quebec. Long range forecast looks pretty cold still, especially across Canada. Big high pressure ridge will be a factor as that sleeps in from the north. Overlooking Europe. Couple low pressure systems coming in this week. Watch for an extreme weather event there through parts of Eastern Europe as that system moves through. Overlooking Australia and Africa. Southeast Asia. No major cyclones, cyclones or typhoons developing, but some intense bands of daily evaporation rains moving into Eastern Africa and as well 
possible cyclone here developing in the long range for parts of northern New Zealand and as well northern territory of Australia. Leave you here looking at the Pacific Ocean as we do have some intense systems moving through the North Pacific this week and they will be making landfall towards BC and northward and watch for wintry events across Canada. We're still not yet in fully spring mode. Thanks everybody for watching. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily do. We'll see you next video. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world. Thank you.